we are live. Oh, almost, I think. All right. There we go. Hello, hello, hello. We are live. And today I'm going to be talking about using your insights against yourself and kind of why we all have a kind of subconscious or sort of semi-conscious um, habit of taking our awarenesses, taking these things that we're learning about ourselves and uh, the things that we're learning about how we might be living out of alignment, how we might be doing things that are harmful to ourselves, that are harmful to others. And rather than being able to take those insights, take that awareness and be like, oh, okay, good. I learned something new. I'm ready to grow. I'm ready to change. That's great. Uh, we go into self shame. We go into um, being really upset with ourselves. We go into feeling like we should have known better and, and what was wrong with us that we used to do that and that we did that and that we hurt ourselves and that we hurt other people. And this is something that I think is just so, so important to talk about because the bottom line is in this life when we are looking to change when we're looking to grow when we're looking to evolve we're going to be constantly discovering where our power is okay so that's a super huge key that we gotta just take a second and really digest that this path of evolution this path of awakening this path of going from chaos to more structure, more order, more creativity, this path of change that is the healing path, the spiritual path, the growth path, whatever you want to call it, is all about recognizing where we have power to change our own lives from a state of relative chaos to a state of relative order, taking our own power to shift those things in our lives that are causing us pain, that are causing others pain, into things that are more evolved. Because remember, we cannot become not something. We never stop being something. We never start being something we weren't before. We always are evolving our behavior to get our needs met in a way that is more in alignment with how reality functions, okay? So everything that we're doing, everything we've ever done and everything we ever will do, is coming from it's a, at its root our attempts at getting our needs met our attempts at survival our attempts at becoming who we want to be who we think we're supposed to be at growth okay everything is in some way shape or form our attempt at survival our attempt at growth our attempt at thriving so even the most chaotic and destructive things we do to ourselves and we do to others at their root comes from, I have this need. I have this desire. I have this, um, this call for growth that I know no other way to get met, to go about, to express except through this. Cause most of us, right. Are deeply unconscious of ourselves. We're deeply unconscious of who we are, of what we are, of what we need, of um, what is actually harming us, what is good for us because of conditioning, because many of us never learn to connect with ourselves and all of these things. We're, we are living lives that are very much subconscious rather than conscious. So this is why we exist in states of suffering because suffering is simply, I don't know how the system works. That's all that suffering really is. Suffering comes from, I'm attempting to meet a need I'm not aware of within a reality that I don't really understand. And this is the best I have cobbled together to keep myself alive, to keep myself growing, to keep myself moving forward in the world as I understand it with myself as I understand myself. So when we get caught in suffering, what we're really looking at is our unawareness. 
we're the things that we're unaware of about ourselves, the things that we're unaware of about the world, and how we're continuing to try to live in a way that contradicts our growth, that contradicts the structure, and therefore breaks ourselves against reality. That's what suffering is. When we're continually trying to meet our needs and have our expression within a reality we don't understand and when we're not understanding ourselves. So that's all that suffering is. So then when we are on a growth path, when we are moving from less awareness to more awareness, what we're always going to find is that we were playing a part in our own suffering that there were things that we were doing, things that we were believing, things that we were enacting, things that we were expressing that, that were in effect leading to our suffering, leading to our pain, leading to our whatever it is that was going on with us. Because again, we weren't aware of what we wanted, we weren't aware of what we needed, and we weren't aware of how the universe worked. So you might discover about yourself that you were um, unintentionally, subconsciously manipulating somebody because you have a subconscious belief that you're not worthy of love and therefore you must manipulate other people into helping you with things, into meeting needs for you, into being there for you because you don't believe that they would just be there naturally and you don't want to be alone. So manipulation was something you learned probably in your childhood what, on how to get your needs for love and connection met. And that was how you were doing it. And so what is really happening here is the, the relationship dynamics where you were in manipulative relationships, you may start to come into awareness that it doesn't feel good for you and that all of your friends are getting upset with you for your behavior. And then eventually you might come into the awareness that like, oh my goodness, I'm a pretty manipulative person. I'm constantly manipulating these people. And for most of us, we see, okay, the suffering that I'm in, right? The, this pain that I'm in in my relationships where I'm constantly having to figure out what people are wanting and figure out what people are doing and I'm in this manipulative state and then there's all this pain and this trauma within the relationships that I have and all of this stuff, you'll, you'll notice that you were suffering. And before that, you may have just felt like it's them. I don't know what's wrong with them, or I don't know what's wrong with me, or what's going on, like why this hurts so much. And then you come to this awareness like, whoa, okay, I am acting manipulatively. I, I'm definitely not being honest. I'm definitely not being authentic. I'm, I'm all of these things. And then, like I say, usually that's where most of us stop. We think, well, okay, I just realized that part of my pain in my relationships is my fault because I'm manipulative. And then we go into shame. We go into blame. We go into, oh, that makes me a bad person. I can't believe I was doing that. And then rather than saying, okay, what was the need I was trying to get met through being manipulative? Where did I learn that being manipulative was the way to be in relationships? Why was I manipulative? What do I believe about myself? What do I believe about other people? Where's the pain point? Where's the, the false belief that I was taught in my early childhood? Like, we, we don't tend to have curiosity for ourselves and compassion for, I must be doing this for a reason, right? We all automatically assume, wow, I'm evil. I'm bad. I'm wrong. Or I'm stupid. I should have known better. I should have been better. There's something wrong with me that I am doing this. So we figure out anything. Right? We figure out that we've been sick and then we figure out that we can change our diet and it'll change us and it'll make us feel better. And then we think like, oh my God, I was so stupid before for all that stupid food I was eating. And, and even though I still crave it and sometimes I eat it and then I beat myself up that I'm doing that because I know it's not good for me. We go down that rabbit trail or with money, we're always spending our money and we don't know why we're doing it. And we're just like constantly trying to save and then we get more and more into debt. And then we're just like so upset with ourselves that we do that over and over again. And we get into these cycles where we start to witness our own behavior. We start to see the, the harm it's causing us and others. And rather than getting curious into, okay, why am I doing this? 
what is the need I'm trying to get met here? How do I think reality works that it may not be that's how it works because I'm in pain, there's suffering. We're not asking ourselves, okay, what are, what are the positive benefits of this chaotic behavior that I have? What are the good things about this that are clearly the thing that are motivating me to do this? And how can I get these needs met in a higher way? Like I said, most of us go into that little bits of awareness. We start to see that our behavior is part of the chaos in our lives. Our way of being is part of the chaos in our lives. And we completely forget that we had a childhood. We completely forget that we were conditioned. We completely forget that our perspective and our perception so much of the time didn't come from us. It came from experiences, how we were taught it, what we were trained to believe, right? We, we all trust our own perceptions so deeply and don't recognize a lot of the time that we even have a perception. We really believe we're viewing reality correctly. We have a, we have a unbiased and completely neutral view of how reality functions and the way that we're operating is the way that it is. And what we're seeing and what we're perceiving is reality. It's neutral objective reality rather than a perception and how we're behaving must just be a reflection of how dumb we are, how stupid we are, how evil we are, how um, incompetent we are, how all of these things. And like I say, and then we start to use this shame of, I can't believe I didn't know better. I should have been able to do better. I have been making all these mistakes. What's wrong with me? I, I, can like we're starting to see the empowerment part where we could change in order to make our lives better but again rather than that being a freedom that's now a new weapon we use against ourselves that's now a new you should have known better you should have done better and if and then we believe that if we're not constantly on top of ourselves shaming ourselves blaming ourselves berating ourselves monitoring ourselves being really tight and really strict with our rules and all of these things to try to keep ourselves in line. We're just going to rebel and do these horrible things. And the truth is we are, we're going to keep doing what we've always done until we have something better. Okay. So that is something we need to really, really, really understand that again, we are never going to become not something. So if you start to have awareness around your behaviors, having a chaotic effect, that there are things that you do and things you believe and things that you're trying that are constantly leading you to pain, that are constantly leading you to, to self-sabotage, to coping, to scapegoating, to things that hurt yourself or others. We must understand that again, at the root of that behavior, at the root of that way of being, is you attempting to get a need met in the only way you know how. That is what is at the foundation of everything we do. So that idea that most of us have, that we must just be evil, that we must just be stupid, that we must just be bad in some way. That is the number one incorrect foundational belief that I think all of humanity carries that is blocking us from growth. Because again, what does it take to grow? As a human being, we need to feel safe before we're gonna grow. And this is just how our nervous systems function. We don't expand when we're in a state of threat. When we feel threatened, our nervous system has been trained, has evolved so that when we are in a state of threat, we do what we've always done because that's how our ancestors survived. And I say this in every video because we need to hear it over and over and over again, that we are not just doing things that we know are bad for us because we're stupid. When we feel threatened, our nervous systems take over and they force us to do what we've always done because to our nervous system, all stress, all threat 
no matter what it is, no matter if it's your boss yelling at you, you literally thinking a scary thought, like literally this, you thinking a scary thought, you imagining getting in a car accident, you having a fight with your significant other or a friend, someone who's important to you, you imagining losing your job, your body reacts and interprets that as a physical danger threat that's happening right now. Your body does not know the difference between something you're imagining and something that's happening in real life. Your body does not know the difference between I can get yelled at by my boss, I could even get fired today, and I'm not in immediate threat of death. There's still gonna be a huge range of time and things that I can do between getting fired and literally not having enough money or not being able to survive. Your body doesn't know that. All your body knows is threat equals we are about to die. So when the body goes into a state of stress, when we are a perceiving threat, when we are in a state of stress, our nervous system says, okay, last time we felt this stress, what did we do? Did we binge? Did we buy something? Did we yell at someone? Did we go into self-hate and blame? Did we manipulate somebody? Did we manipulate ourselves? Did we, you see, these behaviors that we all have. Did I, did I soothe someone? Did I go codependent? Did I go, like I say, manipulative? Did I make it all about my relationship? Did I make it all, did I scapegoat it onto something? Did I cope? Did I self-soothe? Whatever, did, what did I do? What did I do last time? What did I do every single time before that? Do that. Because to your body, that is the action that saved your life. Because if you were in a state of stress, you did any action, and then you survived that state of stress. To your body, you were about to die, you did X thing, and you lived. So then that gets programmed into your nervous system that this is what we do when we face this threat. Because it's the thing that worked. It worked. So literally, even if now in your adulthood, when you're in a stressful situation with your partner and you get manipulative and your partner gets upset with you and it doesn't work, right? It makes them upset. They reject you. But eventually things kind of settle. You work it out. The stress passes, you live. Your nervous system still thinks survival threat happened. Partner got mad at me. So I felt threatened. I did the manipulative thing. My conscious mind knows that it didn't work. But my body perceives that I did the manipulation thing. I lived, therefore, that was the solution. So now next time you're in a fight with your partner, you feel their love going away, you're going to have that deep internal drive to manipulate because to your body, that is the one thing that has saved your life every single time. Because, And again, remember, the stress of your partner rejecting you, your conscious mind knows you're not going to die if your partner rejects you or that if you're in a fight or whatever, but your nervous system that's still trapped in childhood, that saying provision comes from the outside, being loved and being accepted is what makes those who have my provisions on the outside, give them to me. So if I'm being rejected, I'm going to die. That's how our nervous systems were programmed in our childhoods, because that's how it was. In the temporary reality of our childhoods, we were codependent in the sense that we did not know how to meet our own needs. We did not know how to identify our own needs. 
We did not know how to care for ourselves. We could not. And therefore, we were codependently dependent upon our parents, our caregivers, whoever was around, to provide for us. And because we are emotion-based beings, when we felt our parents pulling away, when we felt them rejecting us, when we felt them um, being antagonistic or unavailable or rescuing us, not teaching us how to learn, whatever, that was a nervous system stress. That was a survival threat. So whatever we learn to do, whoever we learn to be in our childhoods, when our caregivers were rejecting us, that gets imprinted into our nervous system and into our conscious mind as this is how the world works. This is who I have to be. This is what I have to be in order to be provided for, in order to survive, in order to get provisions. This is the person I have to be. This is the person I am not allowed to be. The things that got me rejected are now deeply programmed into myself, into my cells as threat to my survival. So then the amount that our conditioning contradicts our true selves is the amount we are going to suffer in this life because moving forward, our nervous systems are going to say, you cannot be this. You must be this. No matter how your authentic true self that is connected to true pain and true pleasure feels good when it is its true self, feels bad when it rejects its true self. Anything that is true to your growth, to your authentic self, feels good. So this is, again, when we're living in true reality, challenge, new experiences, growth, learning something new, figuring out something you didn't know before, trying something and failing, but learning something from it feels good. That's like highest excitement shit. That's what a aligned life feels like, like a constant new experience adventure of figuring stuff out about yourself and about reality. That's where true pleasure comes from in an authentic life. It's growth, it's discovery. It's knowing that you're never going to get it done and you're never going to know everything and you're never going to have it all figured out because that's not where your safety comes from. You're no longer trying to fit into a box so that you will be approved of, so that you can be provided for, right? You will realize, no, my safety comes from being able to figure reality out on my own, getting my needs met on my own as an adult. I don't need anyone to approve of me to meet my needs. I can provide for myself. I can figure out how reality works and figure myself out within it. That's true freedom. That's liberation. I can figure it out. But most of us, like I say, are living in this conditioned reality, this codependent reality, which says I have to already know everything and be doing everything perfect so that everyone will love me. And that's how I get provided for. Right. And our version of perfect is our conditioning. This is, so this is our consensus reality self, consensus reality, pain and pleasure, which can contradict our true selves and a true pain and pleasure. So consensus reality, pain and pleasure, pleasure is getting approved of. Pleasure is living in alignment with your conditioning, doing what your caregivers expected you to do, not doing what your caregivers expected you never to do, being the person that you perceive everyone expects you to be. And remembering too that Martha Beck talks about this. Our generalized other is we all say, everyone thinks this, everyone believes this. And we all have a perception that this is the baseline for what is valuable. This is the baseline for what is good. This is the baseline for what is bad. And that is because we're filtering out all the people, all the perspectives, everything out there that contradicts that story. We have, we have blown up the people who align with those beliefs that we were taught in our childhoods to be everyone. And anyone who doesn't fit that box, we, we literally can't, we're not aware of them. We don't see them. They bounce off or we see them and they have a totally different perspective and we're, and we judge them. We're like, Oh, they're wrong. They're stupid. They're gross. Like they may be living in a life that's far more authentic to us than we are living. And we will mostly look at them 
when we're operating from conditioning and be disgusted. There'll be a part of us that is so attracted to what they are and at the same time is completely disgusted by them because it contradicts our conditioning. Okay, so then there's going to be that consensus reality pain, which can be being your real self, expressing your true self, going on a growth path, making a mistake, discovering something you didn't know before. And rather than that equaling pleasure for you, it's going to bring up all this shame and all this guilt and all this fear that I'm not good enough. I'm bad. I'm wrong. I should have known. Oh my God, what's wrong with me? You see, because that's how we think. Shame is how we learned. Okay. Here's why shame is the thing we go to because shame and guilt are the tools we used to shut down our true selves in order to live in alignment with our conditioning. Because remember from the very beginning, being our true authentic selves in our childhoods felt amazing. We were connected to true pain and true pleasure as small children and being our real selves, going after the adventure, climbing the tree and not knowing how to get down constant, like that constant childlike wonder and curiosity. We get into everything. We're excited about life. Everything is this new grand thing. And we're expressing ourselves naturally on a growth path. So, right, we learn to hit and then we learn to share. And then we learn through feeling. We learn through feeling. We learn through experience, not through being taught. This is all real reality stuff. And then as we're growing, we start to get shamed. We start to get blamed. We start to get rejected. We start to get rescued. We start instead of being taught, you see? And so then that which was our pleasure starts to become pain. And that's very confusing because it feels good to us. It feels right to us to be doing these things. But now our caregivers are rejecting us and that's triggering this survival. Oh my God, I'm going to die if they reject me. So now I don't know what to do. We have this cognitive dissonance and that's what conditioning is, right? So that's now it's like, okay, it feels good to do this, but it's getting me in trouble and that feels bad. So it feels good and feels bad. And then doing this, these things that my caregivers want me to do and not doing these things that my caregivers don't want me to do, it feels bad, but it feels good because then I'm loved and I'm accepted. And that makes my nervous system feel good. So because we don't know what to do, these two things both feel good and bad. You see, truth starts to feel bad the more we're rejected for it. And the lie starts to feel good the more we are accepted for it and find that we get provision for it. So we need something to drive us to do the thing that's against our instinct. We need something to do that's against our feeling, right? It's intellectual. This is how life is supposed to be. This is who we're supposed to be. And it doesn't make any sense to us because it doesn't feel good. So we learn to have this shame and this guilt around our real true selves to create that negative feeling Right. So we're like training ourselves that this feels bad so that we will stop doing it. Because we learn through experience and feeling, not through intellect. It doesn't matter how many times someone tells you you shouldn't do this. If it feels good to you, you're not going to learn to not do it. There has to be some pain involved in order for us to stop doing something. And we also have to remember that if there's pleasure involved in anything we do, we will do it over and over and over again. And again, so this is what it's boiling down to. Anything we're doing that's painful. It's painful to a degree because it's either contradicting our conditioning or it's consensus reality, but it's meeting a need on some level. So, this is why for most of us, again, we need to start to understand that the shame and the guilt thing, 
is keeping us trapped because it blocks us from understanding the need we were getting met through our behavior, the positive intention that is behind everything, right? This idea that we're evil, this idea that we're just bad, this idea that we're just stupid, this idea that we knew better and didn't do better is false every time. If we're doing something that's hurting us or hurting others, we have to start with that is the best I know right now. There are things, right? We, we, we are over assuming our own awareness when we go into guilt and shame about anything that we are doing. Because when we go into guilt and shame about anything that we're doing, we're essentially claiming, I know what I need. I know how to get that need met in a good way. I'm just choosing not to. That's what we're coming at ourselves with. I know better. I know what I should be doing. I know what reality is. And I'm just choosing to hurt myself and others because I'm a shithead. That's what most of us believe about ourselves. And so what I'm proposing here now today is that that is never true. That is never true about you, and that is never true about anybody else. We are acting from such deep levels of unawareness most of the time that we can't even see that everything that we do has a positive intention. We can't see that we're getting our need met when we binge, when we yell, when we manipulate, when we cry and scream, when our emotions go out of, out of control when we spend the money, when we shut down emotionally. You see, we don't notice that in every addictive behavior, every drinking, every drugs, every Netflix, every self-sabotage, every act of shutting yourself down, not doing what you know is right for you, not doing the things that you know are good for you, every act of thinking you know what's right for you, just like being totally convinced and then you just can't get yourself to do it. There is a reason for that. Always. You are meeting a need. You know no other way to meet. You are living within the, the reality that you think exists. And you are probably wrong. And it's not your fault. This is what you were trained to believe. This is what you were trained to see. That your perception has been so finely tuned that, like I said, the things that contradict your worldview, your mind filters out or you automatically dismiss as untruth. There's no part of you that sees someone who's living in a different way that like contradicts your version of reality for most of us and goes, okay, they're disproving my reality. I believe the only way you can possibly be happy is this way. And then this person is doing this wholly other thing and they're totally happy. And we just start to nitpick them and, and believe that they're lying and all of these things rather than, okay, they're showing me that my reality is untrue. Like, like I said, we talked about this a lot in the, in the diet world. We all have these theories of what the perfect diet is, say. And then someone comes along who's eating like a totally different diet and are getting good results. And we debate them. Instead of, okay, maybe my version of how reality works is wrong. Because phenomenon is proving me wrong. And then we go into consensus reality. We just need to convince each other. Right? It's all intellectual. And their health problems will poof, appear the second I convince them that their diet is wrong. And my health problems will poof, disappear, the second I convince everyone that what I'm doing is right. Instead of, okay, it obviously isn't wrong and it isn't right. Otherwise I'd be getting the results I wanted. You see? So we need to understand that we are all hurting ourselves. We are all getting our needs met in ways that aren't the highest level. We are all participating in our own destruction as adults because we were trained to do that. 
in our childhoods, we didn't get taught how to navigate reality through real pain and real pleasure. We were taught conditioning. We were taught, these are the rules. This is the system. If you follow this, you'll be good. This is how it works. This is who you have to be. This is what you have to be. And we learned that. That got programmed into our nervous system as being survival. And then we've been living that for the rest of our lives. Wondering why we're in so much pain and we, and we can't get out. And then, when, like I said, when we come into awareness, awareness is always going to show us that as adults, we have some power over our pain. Liberation is always going to be, this is where I'm responsible. This is where I have power. Because again, ultimately, if you really want to be free, if your freedom is dependent upon somebody else or something else being a certain way, you can't be free. Right? At the end of the day, if your freedom is dependent on someone or something else, you are constantly at the whim of someone or something else. So actually finding freedom is always a process of taking responsibility for yourself, taking the power you have in every moment to make your own situation better for yourself, not waiting for anyone to be different, not waiting for the world to change. It's always going to be, how can I change my perspective? How can I change my behavior? How can I change my way of being to meet my needs better? Right? And, and true growth and true expansion is always going to be discovering how you could do things better. Right? And so when we use that as a tool to say, I just discovered something where I could take more responsibility for myself. I could be... I could start meeting my needs in a higher way, right? The first thing we become aware of is how we're in pain. And then we start to see how our behavior is causing that pain. And we have to move past that phase, right? Most of us get stuck there. I'm in pain. Oh my gosh, I'm contributing to this pain. And then we just get stuck in shame and guilt. I should have known better. I'm causing all this chaos. I'm causing all the destruction. I'm so stupid. What's wrong with me? We try to discipline ourselves. We try to shame ourselves into being different. We try to guilt ourselves. We keep reminding ourselves of how horrible we are and the mistakes that we made and the pain that we caused. And we all think this is what's going to motivate us to change. And it isn't. Because what that does is, you guessed it, it stimulates your nervous system into a state of trauma. Because what did we learn in our childhood at baseline? When love goes away, we are in a state of threat. So when we put our, pull our own love away from ourselves, when we shame ourselves, when we guilt ourselves, when we go into self-hate, self-blame, self-shame, we trigger our own nervous systems that we are under a state of threat. Literally, every time you hate yourself, you activate your nervous system. And your nervous system says, okay, good. What did we do last time we were in this state? Do that again. So we wonder why we can never change. We wonder why, as hard as we try, as much as we guilt ourselves, we're so aware of all the pain and everything that what we're doing is causing us. We think we have such a good idea of what we should be doing instead. Or just stop that, it hurts. You stupid. You're bad, you're wrong, you're evil. And then we just do it over and over again. And then we guilt ourselves, and then we do it again, and then we guilt ourselves, and then we do it again, and we don't know why we can't stop. Because we're working against our own nervous systems. The nervous system is always going to push you to do what you've always done when you're in a state of stress. So that's the first thing. We have to, have to, have to. Start to recognize that if we really want to change, if we really want something different, we have to accept and embrace the nervous systems we have, which say 
I cannot change. I will not do anything different until I feel safe. Because if I'm in a state of threat, I'm not going to risk doing something different because I might die. If I have something that works, don't fix what ain't broke. That's what your nervous system says. So when we are in a state of self-rejection, when we're in shame and we're in guilt, we are forcing ourselves to be what we've always been and do what we've always done. So if it's not working, if it's not, if you can see that it's not your highest growth, your highest potential, your highest joy, you need safety, curiosity. Why am I doing this? What's the positive intention? Where did I learn that this was the only way to be? Where did I learn that this is how to get my needs met? What are my needs? What are my desires? How do I think the world works right now? And how am I operating within that? We start to question our perception. We question, what's the positive outcome? What am I getting out of this painful behavior? Yes, there's pain, but what are the pleasurable parts? Right? We really start to open with curiosity. So we notice we're in pain. We notice that we are having an effect on that pain. And then rather than going into guilt and shame, we have to open to curiosity. That is the turning point. If you can start to say, okay, I really want to beat myself up right now. I really want to shame myself. I want to guilt myself because I'm assuming, right? And a, a, a big part of us, we do this. We beat ourselves up and we shame ourselves because we never want to admit that the programming that our caregivers gave us was wrong. Okay, this is a huge part of why we guilt and shame ourselves. We get stuck in guilt and shame. If I could just change my body, scapegoating, coping, all of these things that we do, because we don't want to have to look at the true facts that what we were taught isn't true, because that's huge existential crisis. And that what our caregivers expressed to us as being the way life is, wasn't real. Because that means we weren't safe with them. And that means we have to figure life out for ourselves, right? We don't want to question our religion. We don't want to question our culture. We don't want to question our education. A lot of us think we're doing it and we're rebelling from it and doing the opposite. But we're not really discovering truth. Right? The rebellion of I'll just do the opposite of what my conditioning tells me is the same. I'm going to completely rely upon my conditioning. Because both of these answers mean that I don't have to think. I don't have to figure out truth for myself. Yeah? If I'm just relying on my conditioning, I'm just assuming what they taught me was right. So if I can't do it, there's something wrong with me. And that is so much easier for us to deal with. That it must just be something wrong with me. I'm too emotional, I'm too sensitive, I'm too weak, I'm too stupid, I'm too this, I'm too that, then maybe what they are telling me I'm supposed to be doing and I'm supposed to be isn't correct. And now I'm going to have to figure out for myself what is. Or the rebellion route, which says, I don't really have to figure anything out either. I'll just do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. If they're doing living in a city, I'm going to move to the country. If they're watching TV, I'm going to watch YouTube. If they're carnivore, I'm going to be a vegan. We're not actually discovering truth for ourselves. We're just saying, okay, I can phone it in. I'll just do the opposite. I'll just do the opposite of whatever I'm seeing, and that must be it. We are afraid to admit to ourselves that our conditioning isn't correct. Or that it isn't completely wrong. Because truth and what is truly right for us and the growth path itself is this constant gray area. It's this constant discovery. It's constantly seeing where things can be upgraded, discovering new things about yourself, discovering new things about reality. You're never gonna get there. So the ultimate conditioning perception that we get out of is this idea that we're ever gonna arrive, the heaven paradigm that we all have, whether you're religious or not, we all have this idea that when I get to X thing, I will be happy forever. I will have it all figured out. I will be secure. 
And that is not how life works. Security comes from everything is going to change all the time. I'm constantly going to be discovering something new about myself. I'm never going to be perfect. I'm never going to be perfectly meeting my own needs. I'm never going to be perfectly in alignment with reality. There's always going to be pain as a part of this experience. And if I'm not in resistance to it, if I'm open to learning from pain, I don't suffer anymore. Right? We are not really afraid of pain. Pain is always going to be here. We are afraid of suffering. And suffering is pain we can't learn from because we're beating ourselves up for it. We're afraid of it. We're running away from it. We're pushing away from it. Instead of, okay, pain, what are you telling me? Right? The, con the questioning of our perceptions, the questioning of our reality. So what is the positive intention? What is the need I'm getting met here? And how can I meet it in a higher, better way? What's the alternative? Because I need this thing, it's not going away, right? So embracing that your needs are not going anywhere. Who you really are isn't going anywhere. There's nothing wrong with you that you can't live in this society and be happy. If that's true for you, that's true for you and it's never gonna change. Your suffering is coming from not allowing yourself to discover what you need that might be different from how everyone else is doing it and letting yourself do it even though it's going to get you rejected. And learning to show your nervous system that you can be rejected, that you can be what you have been trained you're never supposed to be and still survive. And this is the hard part. This is why none of us, like so few people grow. Oh, sorry. Got a little pause here. This is why so few people grow because what it actually takes to, to change is not awareness. Awareness is not curative. Conscious awareness is a step, but it is not the answer. True change requires that we take our awareness and we first get through the trauma of not acting on our conditioned behavior. So when we're feeling traumatized, we're feeling triggered to do our coping behaviors, to do our self-sabotage, to do our scapegoats, our emotions are going crazy. We're feeling that panic, I have to yell at them, I have to blame them, I have to blame myself, I have to beat myself up, I have to do this, I have to do that. Rather than acting on it, we need to allow ourselves to feel that fear and not do it, not do what we've always done so that we can prove to our nervous systems that when we don't do that thing, we don't die. Because again, right now, every single time you have acted on your conditioning, you have proven to your nervous system that that is what kept you alive. So the longer you've been doing whatever you're doing, the longer it's imprinted into your system that this is why you're alive right now. Every time you've had this threat, you did this and it kept you alive. So when we start to really get into this and we say, okay, I'm just not going to yell at my partner. I'm going to see what happens when I don't yell. I'm going to ride the wave of like, I have to say something. I have to do something. I have to, and I'm just going to watch it. And then I'm going to live. And I'm going to say to my nervous system, okay, we lived good. Now what, why did I want to yell? What was it about their behavior that was scaring me so much? Is it really that I don't like what they're doing? Or is that a conditioned response that what they were doing contradicts my conditioning? Do I really actually hate what they're doing? Or, or are they expressing something that I want to be and I won't let myself because of conditioning? And, and when we start to have awareness of our, of our things that we're doing that are hurting ourselves and hurting others, we must resist the urge to beat ourselves up and to stay in unforgiveness of ourselves. Because again, we all think that's going to keep us safe. That's going to stop us from doing this. But really what it's doing is it's keeping us safe from questioning our conditioning, from questioning what our caregivers taught us to be true. Because that's way harder and way scarier. So when we give ourselves the benefit of the doubt, all of us think, 
I'm just going to, that's just giving me permission to just do my terrible thing. If I don't hate myself, if I don't beat myself up, if I don't guilt and shame myself over it, I'm just going to keep doing it. I'm going to be a horrible person. But if you really look at reality, how's that working for you? Has it ever helped you change? And I'm going to say probably not. So what's really going to help? Facing that fear that if I don't beat myself up, I'm just going to stay being this horrible way forever. And being nice to ourselves anyways. Getting curious. What am I getting out of this? What's the need that's being met? What's the positive intention? How is this behavior helping me? What am I getting out of it? How is this something that's actually supportive of me? What's the perception I have of myself and reality that's causing me to do this? What do I think would happen if I didn't do this? What would I lose if I stopped doing this thing or started doing this thing? Right? We start to get curious about ourselves. Coming from an assumption that this is the best I know to do right now. If I knew better, I would do better. I might, think I, I might think I know better, so that's the other big thing. Until you're actually able to do better consistently with no effort, you don't know better. Let me say that again. Until you are able to do things in a way that are less painful, more pleasurable, consistently with no effort, you don't know better. Your awareness is not curative. It has to be embodied. And you might be wrong. You might think you can just stop doing this thing. And then your life would be perfect. I'll just stop binging. I'll just stop yelling. I'll just get the job. And then my life will be perfect. No, it won't. Because the thing that that, the need, the role, that that binge, that that yelling, that that job is filling right now, that void would be there. If you don't understand what need you're getting met through your behavior right now. If you just take that thing away, you will feel worse, not better. Because now you're not even meeting the need at all. Because remember, anything that's painful is only partially meeting a need. That's why it's, there's pain involved. But you're doing it over and over again because there's pleasure. So we look at the pleasure. And that gives you a hint as to what it is that you're getting met. And then you can figure out, okay, well, how can I get that need met in a way that's more in alignment with truth? So then you will find something that feels better than what you're doing. And then you'll just naturally want to do that. You will never have to discipline yourself out of your old behavior. You will never have to discipline yourself or guilt yourself or shame yourself out of anything ever. When you truly understand why you're doing it, what need you're getting met, the perception, and you learn how to get that need met in a better way, you will just naturally want to do the new thing. That's what safety will get you. That's what curiosity will get you. So this, this discipline, this you just need to stop? No, no. The discipline is where you say, I can feel myself going into guilt and shame. And rather than doing that, I'm gonna go into curiosity. Why am I doing what I'm doing? What do I believe right now? What do I think would happen if I didn't do this thing? What do I think would happen if I did do this thing? Where is the pleasure? How am I getting my needs met? Where is the benefit in this? Where is this my conditioning and not my, I didn't come up with this? Where can I forgive myself that this is the best that I knew at the time? Give myself the benefit of the doubt. I'm not just trying to hurt myself or others. Maybe I don't know why I'm doing it. I don't know what the need is. I don't know what the conditioning is. I don't know what the perception is. But I'm going to start with loving myself into a safe state so that I can actually discover it. Because again, when we go into curiosity rather than self-hate, our perception opens. So if you really want to become aware, again, Guilt and shame is never going to get you there because it shuts your nervous system down. It narrows your focus and forces you to do what you've always done and see nothing new. So if you actually want to become aware, 
If you really actually want to grow, the only way is self-love. Because that's how your nervous system works. You have to feel safe before you're going to become aware. So how do we stop using our awareness against ourselves? Number one, become aware that you're doing it. Become aware that you're going into guilt and shame and understanding that for the rest of your life, you are going to see that part of your pain is your fault. And that is how we grow. If there was nothing that you could do differently to make your situation better, you're fucked. You don't want that. You want to discover that there's a part of you that's playing a role in your pain. Because that means there's something you can do about it. So we want to start to celebrate when we discover where we're participating in our own pain. Because that means we can do something about it. We have to stop assuming that we were supposed to already know. That we were supposed to already be at this place. Because we're never going to know everything. We're always going to be discovering how we were living in ways that were hurting ourselves. And if we always make that something to be mad at ourselves about, we will never grow. We will always feel like pieces of shit. So we have to start to embrace. All of us are unaware. Everyone, every single one of us, you are like nobody, you are like everybody else. There's nothing wrong with it. Discovering that you are playing a role in your own suffering and the suffering of our, everyone else is the first key to freedom. Second thing, get curious instead of getting controlling and, and critical. Get curious. Why am I doing this? Where is this my conditioning? Let yourself go through that emotional process. It's going to be scary. It's going to be hard. You're going to think you're going to give yourself permission to be a horrible person. That's not true. The more you love yourself in your painful stuff, the safer you will be to understand the needs you're getting met, why you're doing it, the conditioning, all these things, and the safer you will be to discover where your true power is so you can evolve your behavior to something that makes it better for you, to getting your needs met in a higher way. Because that's all it ever is. You are not bad. You are not wrong. You are not the exception. Everything that you are doing that is hurting yourself and hurting others is the best you know how to meet your needs within your reality perception right now. And that is the bottom line. So when you get comfortable with yourself, when you get curious with yourself, when you say, I'm going to be my own safe space, I'm going to love me into a safe state so I can get curious about this. You will discover what you want, what you need, what the benefits are, and how you can meet those needs in higher and better ways. And then again, you will never need discipline to change because the new ways will feel good. First, it will feel real scary. It will feel like you're going to die when you contradict your nervous system and you don't do what you've always done and you do something different. That's going to be really, really scary at first. So there's going to be that phase where it doesn't feel better to do the new thing. It feels worse. But then as you prove to your nervous system that you survive, the new thing will start to feel better because it gets the need met better. And then that will be what you want to do. So notice you are not the exception. You are not evil. Get curious instead of getting critical. Allow yourself to go through the process of feeling that fear and needing to do what you've always done, not doing it. And then questioning it on the other side. Going through that fear state and then what do I need? What's the positive intention? What's the benefit? How can I get my need met in a better, higher way? It was all this. I'm innocent. I was conditioned. I didn't know. That's okay. I'm always going to have power in my pain. And that doesn't make me a shitty person. That means I was unaware, just like all of us. And I'm always going to have unawareness. But I don't have to suffer. If I don't make my pain mean I was wrong and bad and stupid before, if I don't make my awarenesses mean that I'm an evil person, you can grow, you can change, you can have everything. Okay, so that's that. Curiosity, curiosity. How am I getting my needs met? What do I need? That is the answer. And I will see you in my live next week. Mwah.